morning, good morning, good morning. Wow, time slipped up on us. Amen. Waiting on the time and the time is waiting on me. Amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Amen. Thank y'all for coming in today. Come on in. Come on in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on in the room. Come on. We're going to study today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for coming in this morning. Thank you for coming in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Sister, Sister Brenda, good morning. Good morning, saints of God. Good morning, Sonia, Brother Todd. Amen. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Sister Vault. Amen. Amen. Sister Sharon Riddell, praise the Lord. Amen. Another day God has blessed us to see. Another day in a new year new month that we have never seen before and we want to start this month off on the right foot so we've been talking about how to start the year off right how to start the year off right we gotta start it off right can't start it off on the wrong foot but we have to start the year off right Good morning. Good morning, Sister Ashley. Amen. So we're getting ready to have a wonderful lesson this morning. So we thank you. We thank you for tuning in. Hallelujah. This is the day that God has made. So we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to rejoice, be glad in this wonderful day that our Lord and Savior has made. Amen. As you're coming on in, and we're getting ready to get started. Uh, very soon. Amen. Good morning, First Lady Good morning, Stewart. good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, thanks of God. Amen. Good morning, friends and family. Good morning, Facebook family. Amen. Good morning, Axe family. Good morning, saints of God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us come on in the room and rejoice and be glad be in it. Glad Good to see you guys day. coming on the feed. Sister Amen. Paula Martin, Sister Amen. Leslie. God bless you guys. Good morning, good morning, Come on good in, morning. come on in, so we can get Happy started. Happy New Year! Let <laughs> pull out the horn. Happy New Year! So we want to stay, stay in the spirit of the New Year. I want to work year. that principle that God <laughs> gave us, how to start a year off, that mm -hmm. blueprint. It's nothing like a blueprint, and we want to use the blueprint that God has given us uh, to work this year, this powerful year that we have. Amen. So we're thankful, 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 thankful. Amen. Good Salute morning, Brother good Richard. Morning, good morning. Amen. Brother Will Breathen, Brother Wilfred Jones. Amen. Sister um, Hattie Love, God bless you. Sister Ames, God bless you. We see Amen. Sister. Amen. God bless you, Wanda Foreman. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Sister Paula Martin. Good morning, good morning, saints of God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. We love you guys, too. Love you, too. Life. Sister Sabrina Lee, good morning, good morning, good love morning. Love life. Uh, all right. Evangelist Phyllis K. Simmons, all right. Sister Johnny Harris, Evangelist, good morning. Sister Hazel Strang, good morning. Sister Sylvia Hunter, Sister Son, First Lady Sandra Hart Smith. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Saints of God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Love Some you too. Some prayer warriors on here with us. Rhonda Scott. Good morning, Sister Nietzsche. Harper Glittons. Good morning, all the way from Arizona. All right, all right, Amen. Sister Rhonda Scott. Good morning, good morning, Amen. good morning. Amen. Sister Amen. Tiffany Jones, good morning to you as well. All right. Minister Angela Thomas, good morning. Sister Tiana Lachey Jones, good morning. 
Amen. We got a great lesson. Uh, so this is day number 19. All right, we're praying uh, for you, Sister Carol King. Good morning. Of 2021. Tendasha Gray. Good morning. Yes. Man, 19 days. Lolita. Man, look how fast this year is already Ooh. coming in. We almost will be going back to daylight saving time. This that you can tell even, you can kind of even see things is changing and going back. You can you can see it. You can see it maybe a few seconds. So we gotta we gotta put our we gotta put our got to put our hand to the plow and move forward. And we're going to talk about that this morning. So this first yes, month, morning, first Lady. month, uh, First Lady Stewart, good morning. And good morning, good morning, good morning. We're using this first month to just walk us into a, into a, a greater start of a year. Uh, there's a blueprint. We talked about that in the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, God gave Israel a blueprint how to start the year. My God, my God, he wants us to be successful and we got we to gotta follow that blueprint. But today, First Lady, we're going to talk about our, our subject says, our subject says distracted mm -hmm. by looking back. And last week and this week, we've been talking about some things that would keep us from having a successful year. Mm -hmm. And one of those things is distractions, yes. distractions, great, great weapon of the devil. And we're talking today about distracted by looking back, by mm -hmm. looking back, First Lady, yes. by looking back, looking in the re rearview mirror. You look in the rearview mirror, the rear, you know, rearview mirror, and you you able to see. But in life, just like just in life, you you, you can't drive looking back because. If you do, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have a wreck. You're gonna mm -hmm. destroy some stuff. You're gonna kill yourself. Mm -hmm. So we we wanna we wanna talk about that. So you got a key verse for us this morning. We got some scriptures here, some great scriptures here as we move right. forward. Uh, but distracted by looking back. Okay, don't I, forget that. Let's, don't let's forget do that. this key verse from Philippians three fourteen, where the Apostle Paul says. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I press, that's I Philippians um, 3.14 as a key verse, but our scripture lesson text for today will be coming out of the gospel according to St. Luke. Dr. Luke. So we'll, Dr. Be, Luke. we'll be visiting St. Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, as well as... Um, Matthew chapter 8 verses 18 through 22. Let me reiterate Amen. that for you guys. For you. Give you a chance to find it in your yes. scriptures, in yes. your Bibles. Yes. That key verse is Philippians 3.14. And then our text today will be coming from St. Luke chapter 9 verses 57 through 62. Along with the gospel of Matthew chapter 8. Verses 18 through 22. All, All right. right. Good morning, Sister Valerie. Yes. Alabama. Yes. All so, right. uh, Paul made a declaration. He made a declaration. He said, forgetting those things. And, you know, we have to have an understanding of the word of the Lord because uh, the enemy is such a deceiver. You know, people, I've heard, I've had people say to me, you know, I just can't, I can't forget it. I can't put it out of my mind. You, and, and, and the thing that, and the Bible says forgetting those things. Well, that forget, First mm -hmm. Lady, is, is not like the forget that we sometimes want to say. Uh, that's, a, that's a different type of forget because we're not really created to forget like that. And the other thing about it, if you could forget People talk about this in forgiveness. If you could forget, it wouldn't be any need for forgiveness. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you wouldn't remember it to forgive. Correct. So mm -hmm. so you have to understand this forgetting mm -hmm. in, in Philippians chapter three and, and and that verse that verse number fourteen that you read, this this is this is this is this is not uh, uh, the forgetting we're talking about. That verse thirteen. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before verse 14 that you read i press towards mark for the prize of the high calling of god in christ jesus so 
when you when you when you look at that, that forgetting is I choose not to meditate on it. Mm-hmm. I choose yes. not to stare at my shortcomings, my mistakes. I choose not to stare at my past, meditate on my past, so I get stuck in the past. Right. So I don't. I choose not to meditate on it. But that's mm-hmm. for just forgetting it. Uh, no, 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 no. You're gonna remember it. Okay. You're gonna remember it. So, <laughs> but he said, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna focus on that. Right. Because that's what he's saying. I'm that's not gonna a meditate. Dist- that's a distraction. I'm not gonna focus on that because going forward, mm-hmm. if I'm focused on going. On something that happened in the past. I cannot go forward. And and we get stuck there. We mm-hmm. get stuck there first lady. It's so important. So Paul is making a and, and you know what? This is personal. Mm-hmm. This you know, we use this, but Paul is talking when you read when you read uh Philippians chapter three, he, he's giving his testimony. Mm-hmm. He's talking about being being circumcised the eighth day. He's talking about uh the stock of Israel, tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrew, touching the law, of Pharisees concerning zeal. Paul is given given his testimony and he says, All this I've done, I can't look back. Now, you know, we see Paul we see Paul, the great apostle, in in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, you know, Paul talks about that he wasn't worthy, he wasn't fit because of what he did. And what he did was persecute the church of God. So if he focused on the mistakes that he made, if he focused on the people that mm-hmm. that that died, mm-hmm. you know, think about that. If he focused on the people that actually died, think about it. if he focused on the people that he had murdered, Stephen, where he was holding their coats and giving consent. And if, if, if he focused on that, the devil would have a field day. Mm-hmm. So what I'm saying is we cannot focus on the things in our past, no matter the mistakes that we've made. Paul says, I'm not focusing on that. He said, I'm forgetting. I'm, I choose not to meditate on it. Now, we see in scripture that sometime that would come up. That would come up. You, you, you see that in his writing that would come up. And he talks about not being worthy, not being fit. He, t- he talks about that because of what he did in his past. And first lady, so many people are distracted by their past. And the devil will get you stuck. In your past, and it doesn't have to be ten years ago, twenty years ago. It can be, it can be yesterday. Yesterday is your past. Last week is your past. It don't have to be no forty, fifty years. It is gone. It is now the past. It is now history. We learn from it, but we must move forward. Also, with him talking in this passage, Pastor, he's not just talking about um, the things that he did to persecute the church. He's he has a lineup and right. a layout of his stock, of his accomplishments, his resume, the things he has done in this life. When he goes into being circumcised the eighth day um, of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, a touching the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, uh, persecuting the church and touching the righteousness, which is of the law he says i was blameless he has a resume longer than your arm and he said i count all this stuff done for the excellency of the knowledge of christ he says i don't i don't even the things that i've I've accomplished i'm forgetting all that stuff you know because sometimes we we have all our plaques and we have all our trophies and we have all our medals and we have all our credentials and we have all our degrees and we have all these things that we're leaning upon that distract us from what God is calling us to do, that distract us from moving forward and progressing in the kingdom of God. And he says, I'm not even going to focus on the things that I've attained. He mm-hmm. says, he said, not as though, I, not as though I've already attained. Not as though I've, not, he said, I haven't arrived. He right. says, not as right. though I've already accomplished the things that I'm supposed to accomplish in this life. Yes, I've done some great things for God. Yes, I've, I've made some accomplishments in the kingdom of God, but I can't even focus on that. Right. I can't. I can't even focus on the past of what, of what, you know, because you know sometimes even we like the to good things in the past, exactly, the accomplishments exactly, because the evil. And that's that's a lot of things that he's talking about in this scripture where he's he's laying it out of everything he's accomplished and done. He says, "But I count all that stuff done for the excellency, for the knowledge of Christ Jesus." And he says. Um, these things, I, I'm not, you know, when he say dung, y'all know what dung is, right? He said, I'm counting it as something that, that 
I would cast Rubbish. away and that you would cast away that 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 we would discard. We we don't hold that kind of stuff around. We don't we don't treasure that kind of stuff. We don't we flush it down the toilet. He said, I'm flushing all that stuff down the toilet so that I can get closer to God. He says, I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm not concerning myself with yesterday. Yesterday, you know, I, you know, I don't know, it's Mary, Mary, somebody said yesterday. I'm not thinking about yesterday. Should I grab my last tear over all those things and yesterday? I'm moving forward. I'm not, I'm not getting stuck here and you cannot get stuck because it's a distraction when you begin to meditate and contemplate and rehearse and rehash and keep going back to the past because the past is in the past. You cannot bring your past into the future and change it. That's why it's called the past. Right. And so since you cannot change the past, you need to meet, move forward in a positive direction, forgetting those things which were behind and press forward toward the mark, press forward toward God, press forward to the kingdom of God, the things of God, the ways of God, the will of God, the word of God. You must press forward. And that's what he's trying to help us to see in this passage of scripture that We've got, we cannot get stuck, brothers and sisters. We must move forward in a positive direction. Amen. Amen. And be distracted by looking back. Cannot be distracted by looking back. And Paul said, all that was good, but that's dung now. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. You know, it was good for the time I was in. And, mm -hmm. and I was all of this to the Jewish nation and my Jewish upbringing, but Christ has come now and all that stuff. You know, the law, the law is, is grace and truth now. So mm -hmm. uh, that's wonderful. Our main, our main, one of our main scriptures, uh, Luke 9, 57 through 62. First lady, you want to uh, read that for us and we'll dive into this uh, moving forward. Uh, right. Amen. Distracted by looking yeah. back. Now that's, that'll distract you there. Yes. That'll distract you. And My this will God. be the New King James Version. Of St. Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, New King James Version. If you want to turn to that version, um, it is close to the King James Version, but it's just slightly different. All right, and as you're turning there with us, um, it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Yeah. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said unto him, No one, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. And we have this in another translation. We want you to hear it in the Living Bible and in the Message Bible, verses 61 and 62. The Living Bible says, Another said, Yes, Lord, I will come, but first, let me ask permission of those at home. But Jesus told him, anyone who lets himself be distracted from the work, I plan for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. Mm. Let me read that six, verse 62 again. He says, Jesus told him, anyone who has let, him, has let himself be distracted, from the work I planned for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. The Message Bible says it like this. Then another said, I'm ready to follow you, Master. But first excuse me while I get things straightened out at home. Jesus said, no procrastination. No backward looks. You can't put God's kingdom off till tomorrow. Seize the day. Amen. Seize the day. Amen. So Jesus is letting them know here uh, about once you put your hand to the plow. Yes. Once you start moving forward. 
once you're born again, once mm -hmm. you're in the kingdom and you're moving towards uh, what God wants no you to do. Look. So you, we have to understand that, you, you know, you that you can't look back. You mm -hmm. can't look back moving forward. It will mm -hmm. hinder you. It, it will definitely, definitely cause you to stumble, trip, or fall. So let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's look at this here. Let's, let's walk through it first, lady. Mm -hmm. He says, now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever mm -hmm. you go. Mm -hmm. You see that. And Matthew says in, in, in 818 through 22, uh, about, uh, I will follow you wherever you go. Mm -hmm. Wherever you go, I'm gonna be following you. Okay. So the Lord teaches them. And he just takes. He just takes this. He takes what the man says, and he teaches a lesson. Teaches a lesson not only for the man and those that are around, but he teaches one for us because it's written for us. And he says, and he says, I'll follow you wherever you go. You know, we we make bold statements. We make tremendous statements about following the Lord. Whatever you ask, I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. I'll do this. I'll do this, mm -hmm. and I'll move here. And we really don't know what we ask and we do not understand what's, what, what's coming out of our mouths. And Jesus began to tell him, foxes have holes mm -hmm. and birds have nests. But you wanna, you're want you saying you're going to follow me. Mm -hmm. I want you to understand that the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. So so if you're going to follow me, you got to take up your cross. Now, Jesus made yes. that very clear. Yes. He, yes. Didn't want, he didn't try to hide it from us. He didn't try to hoodwink us. That is gonna be that is gonna be sunshine every day. He yes. told us up front, yes. if you're going to follow me, you're mm -hmm. gonna to have to take up your cross and you have to take it up daily mm -hmm. and follow me daily. And we understand what the cross represents, uh, the crucifying, the crucifixion mm -hmm. uh, of the yes. flesh, the yes. dying of the flesh. Uh, and 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 fifty nine first lady comes and says, uh, this man, this is what he says. This is the the reply. That the man had, he says, you know, now let me go bury my father. Now, now, now something, you know, something here. He that the man, the man said to Jesus, "I will follow you wherever you're going." And then when Jesus said yes, he said, "But I gotta go first and bury my father." But look at this verse, Pastor, in another translation. When we look at the Greek and, and it translates, and we look at some other. Um, instead of the King James Version, listen to verse, um, that's verse number 59. Verse mm -hmm. number 59 says in the Living Bible, it says okay. another time when he invited a man to come with him to be his disciple, the man agreed, but wanted to wait until his father's death. <laughs> He's not dead yet. Right. Verse number 59 in the Passion Translation, um, this is the Amplified, excuse me, the Amplified says in verse number 59, and he said to another, become my disciple, side with my party, and accompany me. But he replied, Lord, permit me first to go and bury, await the death, await the death of my father. So when we look at it in other translations, uh, um, the message Bible says, excuse me for a couple of days, please. I have to make arrangements for my father's funeral. It's like he's not even dead yet. He's he's awaiting the death of, of, a, of a father. But Jesus says, except you love me and put me first before father, before mother, before all others, you cannot be my disciple. And when we understand that he has to have the preeminence, the Lord has to be first and foremost in our first. lives. Absolutely. We, we cannot put him on the back burner. We cannot make him an optional choice. We cannot make him, when he's going to be Lord, he's got to be Lord of all. Or, or Lord, not at all. So so we understand that when he, he gives us the choice, he tells us in the scriptures, count up the cost. Count up the cost. Are you willing to count up the cost and give all for the namesake of Jesus Christ. It's a choice that all of us are going to have. This is an individual choice. This is not a group decision. This is not a vote. This is not a majority rule. This is not a, a quorum. This is not. Mm -hmm. This this is an individual choice that each and every one of us have to make individually. 
This has nothing to do with mama, daddy, sister, brother, cousin, uncle, wife, husband, son, daughter, relative, friend, family, foe. All this is individual. Yes, got to make a decision. And, and, and he's saying, I want to follow you, but I want to do this other stuff first. He, he's distracted mm -hmm. by things in his life. And so the Lord is saying, now, we're going forward. You cannot go forward, you know, thinking about thinking about the past or thinking about things that has not happened yet. You cannot go forward looking backwards. You got to keep your eyes on the prize. You got to keep your eyes focused going forward. You can't look towards the wind. Peter looked at the wind, mm -hmm. and he started sinking. The wind got bolsterous. You, can, you can't do that. And, and you got to keep moving. Now, 2020 was a very, uh, very difficult year. Very difficult year in so many ways. 2020, First Lady, it was such a difficult year mm -hmm. for so many people. Yes. Millions and millions of people. Uh, very difficult year. In the beginning of this year, we, we see the same thing we did in 2020. Very difficult start of the year. Things have happened. But God is saying... You cannot afford to get so out of focus that your focus is behind you, mm -hmm. uh, that you're stuck on, on things that have happened in your past. You can't you, you can't get out of focus. You, you know what he's mm -hmm. saying? You, you, mm -hmm. That just cannot happen. You must move forward and you got to move forward in the name of the Lord. And if you don't move forward, brothers and sisters, you're going to find yourself stuck. So this man wanted to follow Jesus. He said, I'll, I'll, I'll follow you. And in Matthew, first lady, you know, uh, he, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll go wherever you go. You know, I love, that's, you know, that's lots of talk there. I'll go wherever you go because he didn't realize where Jesus was going. But you, you, you got to move forward, not looking back. Now, Did I read, did I read Matthew? you didn't read Matthew. You want to read let's, Matthew? Let's, let's read Matthew because... Yeah. Uh, it's very similar. We have these Gospels um, writers. And we gave you the scripture earlier of Matthew chapter 8, verses 18 through 22. So let me go ahead and read that because it goes right yes. along. It goes hand in hand with Luke chapter 9. So Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse 18 through 22, it says, And when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command to depart to the other side. Yes, then a certain scribe came and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Yes, yes. Yes. So we see the parallel here between these two scriptures and uh, everyone saying, I will follow you. I will follow you. I will follow you. It's more than a notion to make that declaration when you understand that Jesus has, he tells us up front, um, this is not going to be a flowery bed of ease. This is not going to be, you're not staying in the, the five star hotel. He says, foxes, um, have holes, birds of the air have nests, nest. but the Son of Man, he doesn't even have a place Placed, to lay his see. head. He he doesn't have his own home. Now you remember um, at the birth of Jesus, they move to, they leave Bethlehem, they go to Egypt, they stay there a while till the death of Herod. They come, they come, they're gonna come back. He finds out that Herod's son is in power. He moves to uh, Nazareth. He doesn't go back. Jesus is brought up in Nazareth, but as a as a young boy, then when he starts his ministry, he he has his base here in Capernaum. He he moves from the area of, of Nazareth where he grew up and his ministry base is in Capernaum. But he doesn't he doesn't he said, I don't even have my own house. I don't even have my have my own this is this is where he where he's ministering from, this city. But he's saying, uh, I don't even I don't even have a place to lay my head. I don't know where I'm going to be from the next town to the to to one place to the other. This is this is ministry, and it's not going to be a comfortable 
No. It's not going to be something that, no. oh, everybody's wanting to do. You know, nowadays, everybody, you know, I don't say before the pandemic, a lot of people want to pass. A lot of people want to have a church. A lot of people want to do this, but they don't count up the cost. They don't count up the cost. They All they see is somebody calling their name, a title, some money, some, you know, they see things that's, that look like it's comfortable, like it's right. a, like it's not a calling, like it's a a job. Mm -hmm. It's a difference. This 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 is a calling. This is something that God has said. He's called and said, "Come on and follow me. Come on and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me." I mean, this this is a daily thing. Of the, have you counted up the cost of taking up your cross? Yes. Have you counted up the cost? of taking up your cross and it's it's not going to it's not like you just you see people going across the country of america picking up a wooden cross and walking from um the east coast to the west coast no he, this is a different type of cross the lord is talking about he's not talking about replicating going to golgotha's hill carrying our cross on your back he's saying taking up your cross being able to suffer for the namesake of yes, christ the yes. bible says yea and all that live godly in and christ, christ jesus, jesus shall suffer persecution that means you're gonna go through something he says if they hated me don't you know you being my disciples you're oh, gonna be you. hated you're going to be ostracized. You're going to be cast aside. You're going to be beaten. You're going to be martyred. You're going to be, people don't are not going to like you. People are going to talk about you. People are going to do things. He says, don't you know if they did that with me and called me bells above, the prince of devils, don't you know they're going to call you the same thing? So he says, arm yourselves with the same like mind. Don't get distracted here. Because if you stay in the past, if you stay trying to be in a comfortable position, if you stay um, where you are and you're not following the Lord, you or you try to you try to straddle the fence, you try to follow the Lord, and you try to stay in your past, he said you can't do it. You're distracted. You're distracted if you're trying to go two places at once. You're trying to please you trying to please mammon and you're trying to please God. Well, it doesn't work you, like you that. You can't you can't do it. And, you know, he said something that is so powerful that and it's powerful and it's, it, it shakes you, too, when you read it. He says they're not fit for the kingdom of God, living a, a life distracted from what God is planned from you. And, and this is this is what this is what the living Bible says. Anyone who lets himself be distracted from the work mm -hmm. I plan for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. Now that is a powerful statement yes, there. Yes, That's yes. a powerful statement. He's saying, it, you know, cause you know what? In life, the devil will distract you, not for a day or week. You know, the devil, a distraction can last all your life. Distractions can last for years. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all listen to me right now, know what I'm talking about. Because something, you can you can get involved with some things and be distracted for years. Mm -hmm. I mean, years. Yeah. And it takes something to pull you out of the distraction. You, you've been on a detour mm -hmm. from, from the main mm -hmm. course of your life. You've been on a detour. And, and he says, it's a distraction. It's a distraction. Mm -hmm. Now, he calls a description, description, uh, in, he called it a distraction in Luke, uh, distracted from the work. In the Message Bible, he calls it procrastination. Whatever it is, whatever the devil going to use, it could be fear. But he's saying you cannot get distracted right now by looking back. I really believe God, First Lady, is really talking to us. And he's, he's specifying this and he's talking to uh, those that we're talking to. But somebody in particular uh, that you have spent a great deal of time looking back. You say, how do you know I'm looking back? Because your conversation is backwards. Mm -hmm. Everything that you're talking about, you're talking about what used to happen. You know, mm -hmm. even even sometimes in church, I hear people saying, "Let I, I want I want us to get back. I want us to have a church like we used to have." And, and I, I've never understood that that statement. I really haven't. I've never understood that because uh, when I study the churches in the Bible, uh, the church that where the apostles were, they had their problems too. But if you looking back for a fantasy, looking back for uh, the golden years, you know, oh, it'll keep you from going forward. 
Because you get caught up, you get caught up in in nostalgia of of what we used to do. There it is. There it is. First day we used to how we used to, and you see that gleam coming people out, that sparkle coming in their eyes when they looking and they looking back. Oh, how we used to have church and that sparkle. Oh, what we used to do, brothers and sisters. We cannot move forward looking back. So there are some things. Now this is this is the thing that he says you're not fit. Now. To be honest and to be real, we no one living on the planet haven't made mistakes that they regret. No one on the planet living. It's only one perfect man, and, right. and, and that was Christ Jesus. Right. He was the perfect man. The rest of us, we make mistakes. We make decisions and choices. There is no one living that have lived for any length of time that haven't made a decision or a choice that they wish they could undo, they wish they could redo, they wish they could fix it. I, no, no one, no one, no one, no one. I only have to ask you about that. I, I know because that's not, we, we make mistakes. Cause all of sin it comes short of the glory. But you can't get stuck on that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people even, oh, even, you know, 60s and 70s and 80s, they, they're focused on the mistakes they made, the mistakes they made in the past. You have to let that go. A righteous man falls seven times and he's still not destroyed. You know what keeps? You know the reason why he's able to keep getting up? Cause he forget he he pushed past that he failed yesterday. He he keep pushing past that he messed up. He keep pushing past that it didn't go his way. So you, we have to, we have to push past because we're in 2021. And there are some things that 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 will that will handcuff you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, Come on, and, first lady. And, I mean, but there those, are some things that handcuff you. Yeah, and you can drag those. Oh yeah. You drag those handcuffs Hallelujah. into your present, Shaiyakutu. and you take the handcuffs my into your God, future. My God. My and what God. All oh, right. My God. My <laughs> Amen. God. My so, God. So when you understand. That if you're handcuffed to your past, my, you bring my, those my, handcuffs my, my. into your future. So every choice, my. every decision, every thought that you think, the way that you do things is predicated on the past that you're dwelling right, on. Right, right. That's right. So what you bring into your future, what you bring into your present is predicated upon what you're dwelling on, what you have experienced in your past. So when you, when you drag the past into your present, you're still living in the past. Right. You're right, still living right. in the past. Come on, come on. When you're dragging what you had happen to you, what you did, what you said, what you experienced, you're making all your choices and decisions based on what you're handcuffed to in your past. Man. So when you do that, you're not in your present anymore. Right. You're still in the past. Still in you're the past. You're still operating in the past. And so he says, I'm pressing toward the mark. For the prize. I'm not pressing to go back. I'm right. not pressing to, to, to return. I'm not pressing to turn around. I'm not pressing to go backwards. And that's what one scripture we read. He said, don't go backwards. He says, not just looking back, but don't go backwards. He says, because if I do that, I'm not only distracted from the work, I'm procrastinating and no one is able to, to go forward and move the way God would have you to move in the direction God would have you to move, doing what God would have you to come do. On, come on. If you're still looking back. Right. Now if right. I'm looking back, my eyes of my eyes, my focus is not my on my head is turned. Yes, my head is turned. Not only is my head turned, what I'm seeing, what I'm perceiving has turned. What I'm being able to look upon, not just physically my head turned. But my thoughts are backwards. My emotions. My emotions are backwards. My actions are backwards. What I say is backwards. And what I do is backwards. Right. That's good. Because I'm backwards. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking back at my you. Become, my clothes might be right the right way, but I'm backwards. You know, and you become, because if you're looking back, you're thinking back. Yes. And exactly. as a man thinking, thinking that it's hard, hard, so, so is, is he. he. So if you if if you if you're looking back then that means your thoughts are there. Your exactly. thoughts are backwards. Yes. Yes. And, yes. and the Hebrew writer told us what, first lady? 
What did the Hebrew writer tell us? He says, let us lay aside every weight. Every weight. And the sin that does so easily beset us. Yes. Looking unto, run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. He says, we've got to lay aside every weight. Thank you, Jesus. And a weight is not necessarily Thank a you, sin. Jesus. It might lead to a sin, but he says, lay aside the weight. Lay aside that, that thing that's weighing you down. Right. Lay aside that thing that's causing you not to move about freely in Christ. Lay aside that thing that's, that's disturbing your peace. Lay aside that thing that's stealing your sleep. Lay aside that thing that's weighing you down. You have people say, I got something weighing on my mind. I got something heavy on my mind. I got something I, I keep thinking about. Something in the past. It's, yeah. it's something that has happened in the past. Right. And he right. says, you're letting that weigh you down. He says, now it's time for you to lay aside the weight and the sin so that easy. does so easily beset you. Because that weight takes you to a place where you where you sin. Because you keep your eyes and your focus. You're double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in oh, all his ways. ways. You see instability every day. You see people operating and working in instability every day. He said, when you operate in, in with a double with a double mind, that means you're not focused. Mm, a be. focused person is not double-minded. Can't be focused. When you're double-minded, your mind is in two different places. Your mind is in the past. And trying to be in the present. You're double-minded. And you're trying to bring your past into your present to operate in your present for your future. Right. <laughs> so you can't plan for the future because you're still stuck in yesterday. So that's why he says we got to run this race. We got to run this race with patience. But you know what? We, we, have, we have to be realistic and understand that there are some things that in our past that it's like a vacuum trying to pull us back mm -hmm. paul said it paul says paul says it in romans he says i see a law that's in romans chapter 7 he said things behind me there's another law trying to bring me back into, into captivity. captivity see if you're going back so you back to back back into change back into slavery he says there's something pulling on us mm -hmm. and brothers and sisters i'm telling you right now there are some things pulling on us there are some things pulling on us and it don't have to be five years ago or 20 years it can be yesterday mm -hmm. there are some things that are pulling on us and we have to move forward he says now looking unto jesus the author and the finisher our, our faith jesus was able to stay focused on the future for the joy it says that it will set before him See, if you don't focus on Jesus, you're going to lose focus. Peter Peter lost focus on Jesus, and he started sinking. Mm -hmm. You know, First Lady, wow. uh, I, I, believe, wow. I believe one of the things that really keeps us looking back is our, our unwillingness, or I don't want to say inabilities, but I want to say our unwillingness to forgive ourselves, to forgive ourselves, to let that go, let it go. You know, because you can't fix it. It ain't like you can fix it. You cannot fix it. You can't fix it. The only way you can fix it is if you got a time machine. And I, I, I tell and I and I tell the church all the time, if you got a time machine you had where you go in the past, I I need to borrow it. I need to borrow it today. Because I and some things that you could go back and fix, you would fix those things. You can't go back. So that's why Jesus says, the Bible says, looking unto him, the author and the finisher of faith. Let that go. Forgive you. Forgive yourself. Move forward. Mm -hmm. And you know what, First Lady, what we need to do is, is, is just examine our words. Look, look, look mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. It's just where your conversation is. Mm -hmm. Is your conversation in the back? Right. Right. Is your conversation in the past? Just right. even, it, it's so important that even the people who are around watch the conversation. If the conversation is is, a, is 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 about things in the past, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's all of that. I don't care how good it was. Just like Paul's stuff, the good stuff, the bad stuff, it's over. It's done. You can't live off of yesterday's bread and yesterday's success and what we how we used to have church. No, 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 no. We have to move forward. Forgive yourself. Release yourself. So you can move forward. And if you're going to move forward, you got to get your thoughts out of the past. You got to get your thoughts out of the past. Because if, you, if, you, if you're looking in the, in, in the past, you're thinking about the past. So, so what will happen is you try to bring your past into your future. You'll keep repeating the past. 
and those bad things. Forgive yourself. Yes, I did it. I made that mistake. I'm moving on. And you know what? Paul is that perfect example. We talked about pressing because Paul, Paul did some horrible things. He said, I'm the chief of sinners. He talked about that. And then he says, you know, I'm not fit. I'm not worthy. You know, he, he has a couple of bouts where you see 20 years later in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 20 years later, Paul get called up just out of, out of the blue. He started talking about what he did. Because you think about folks that was murdered, folks that was killed, and you thought you was doing God's will, and you were not. But he says, I got to get past. I, I got to move forward. I can't get stuck in that. I can't let the devil make me think that if I don't think about it, I don't care. No, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's that's a trick of the devil. Make you think that you got to think about it. If you think about it, that means you care. You care. If you don't think about it, that means you're a horrible person. You don't care. No, free yourself and nothing you can do. Nothing you can do. What did David do first lady when his son died? He when that up. boy died? He got up. He washed his face. He changed his clothes. He ate and he went into the house of God and worshiped. My God. He, 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 he. he he didn't get stuck there. He he knew he couldn't change nothing. He said, he can't come to me, but I can go to him. Yeah. So I've got to go on and live my life. i got to go on and move on from here. I can't get stuck in what has just happened. I can't get even stuck in the death of this boy. Right. I, can, I can't even get stuck. And the mistakes that he that, made that caused that. That caused it. So he, he, is, he is at a place where he has to deal with what he has, has gone through. He has to understand that nothing that he can do or say is going to change what has what has transpired with what he's done with Bathsheba, what he's done with um, the birth of this this child that's coming forth. He he has he has made his I would say mistake, but this is he committed his sin. We said the weights and the sins. Right. You, you got to lay aside all of those, not just the weights, but the sins as well. You say, well, I did this first lady. I did that first lady. You don't understand. God is willing to forgive us. He said, if we confess our faults, he's faithful. He's just, he's righteous. He's going to forgive us when all we confess, you know, and he's going to cleanse us, forgive all us and cleanse us. And so he wants us to move on for there, not to go back to wallowing in the muck in the mire, not going back to because I made a mistake, not going back to because I sinned here, I sinned there. It's time to get up. It's not get distracted about what has happened in the past. Deal with it, move on. Deal with it and move on. So right. we, we see here this distraction here where we're trying to focus on what God is calling us to do. He says, no one having put his hand to the plow. Looks back. And looking back is what? Fit for the kingdom oh, of we God. Want to be fit. We He's, want to he be says, fit. He says, you're distracted from the work. Right. What work? The work of God. The work that he's really called us on this earth to do. The work I've planned the for you. The work that he has planned for us was not yes. just work at a, at a spe specific location on a specific job, working for a specific company. He says, no, the work that I planned for you, if you look back, you are not fit, he says, for the kingdom of God. You're not fit for the work that I've planned for you. He says, you cannot start something and not want to finish it. Jesus was a finisher. You cannot start putting your hand to the plow and look we'll back. Man. Right. And you know, the Bible says you, 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 can't, you can't put God's kingdom up till tomorrow. Mm -mm. You can't have a tomorrow. You, can, you can't have a tomorrow. I get around to those. You know what? Tomorrow it may never, never come, come for you. It, you know, it, it may never it, come for yeah, you. Yes. So you have to understand that we're 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 on the clock. We you cannot put off the kingdom of God. When, when the Lord says, "I must work the work of Him that sent me while it's day," for the night is coming when none of us can work. If Jesus saying, "I got a, a specific amount of time to work here on earth," and that door of opportunity is just for a specific time. Right. You and I have a door of opportunity yes. to, to work yes. for the Lord, yes. and it's just for a specific time. So we must work the work of him that sent us while it's day, because the night is coming when none of us can work. He says, work now. Put your hand to the plow now. Do what God has called you to do now. Now 
It is high time for us to wake out of our slumber. Now is high time for us to wake up out of our sleep. Now is the time for us to put our hand to the plow. And now is the time for us not to look black. Look back. Now, 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 now. Do not procrastinate. Not one day I'll get around to it. No. You're not going to no. get around to it. Right. You're not going to get around time to it. Is death is when you keep, the us. longer you put stuff off, the more difficult it becomes to get to it. The, more, the longer you procrastinate, the more you find excuses not to do it, the more, the more you put stuff off, the more difficult it's going to be for you to get back in place. It's, it's like when you're engaged in something and you begin something, and you get distracted, you get off of it, you go do other things, you you go, you get sidetracked. It'll be a whole month, it'll be a whole year, it'll be a decade before you realize, I never got around to doing what I said right. I was going to do. Right. I never got around to doing what God called me to do. I never got around to doing it. I was going to do it. I was, I really, really, I was going to do it. I planned on doing it. I wanted to do it. But you, but you put it off. You procrastinated, so you never got around to it. And he's my saying, "My God, my God." He's saying, "Do not procrastinate. Focus now. Be about your father's business now. Do kingdom business now. Get busy for God now." I was gonna share one day. I was gonna post. I was gonna tag. I was gonna, I was gonna get with this social media thing. I was gonna get with this social media ministry. I was gonna do it one day. But you know. I know everybody else was doing it, so I was good. No, he's telling you, today that you hear my voice. Harden not. Harden not your heart. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Nike, just do it. And he got that from the Greek. He got that from what they were saying. Jesus, mm -hmm. do it now. God yes. bless you, my brothers and sisters. We love you. We, we thank you for tuning in. And we're going to keep attacking this the whole month. We don't have many days left in this month, but we're trying to set we're trying to set the stage to move forward. And we you know, it ain't one or two days. You you gotta you gotta fight with this thing. You have to wrestle with this thing going forward. It's something that we have to do. This is not something we we're not trying to tell you that this is easy and this is a piece of cake. When Paul talking about putting things behind them and pressing, when you talk about press, press that means something that's pushing up against you. If ain't nothing pushing up against you, there's no press. You know, you have to press. I mean, that there's there's resistance, first lady. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be resistance to move out of your past. What has happened, especially when there has been mistakes or even when there's been great success. Sometimes people have had great success and they do not move forward because they're stuck in what they've already accomplished. God bless you. Come on, first lady. Mm -hmm. Tell us what we got for the week and finish this up. Give us the All remarks, right. final things right. here this morning. All right. We thank you guys for joining us on this terrific Tuesday. God yes. has blessed us already. Uh, have some beautiful weather here in Conway. Yes. God bless you. I don't know what your weather is, where you are, but we thank God for the beautiful weather on today. We thank him for this beautiful morning. We thank him for his beautiful power and presence that we feel. We thank him for our lesson today, um, Distracted or distracted by looking back and we don't want to look back we no, want to look forward no. we want to we want to get 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 and stay focused so god bless you for joining us on today we love you guys we appreciate you tuning in we thank you for all you loving and liking it and most of all getting your social ministry on and sharing and, and posting and tagging and do, setting your watch parties we just thank you um, for participating and putting your hand to the plow this morning all right on our schedule this week you know on tomorrow we'll have that prayer line at 5 30 in the morning and if you can join us central standard time join us on that prayer line yes uh, we see you joining it. us from all across the country need we see it, you coming it. in from florida we see you coming in from alabama we see you coming in from oklahoma we see you coming in from new york we see you coming in from missouri and kansas we see you coming in from texas and california we see you coming in from all across the country we see you coming in we see arizona we hear you and see you coming in on that prayer line we thank you for joining us on uh, many parts of the country if i didn't name your, your your part of the country 
and you're coming in on that prayer line and going to put it up on the feed. We want to acknowledge and recognize you as well. We thank you for joining us from far and near. And it's okay to tell us where you're joining us from when you come on. Um, we want to recognize um, where you're um, supporting the ministry from far and near. We thank God for you. Amen. We have claimed you as our Facebook family. We have claimed you as uh, a part of our extended acts family. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Reaching all the world for Jesus Christ. And we're putting our hand to the plow. And we're not looking back. We thank you guys for joining us. And so join us tomorrow at 8 o'clock for um, another uh, session of our morning manna. Um, and then on um, Wednesday evening, we have that reading through the Bible class um, at 5.30. You don't want to miss that. And at 6.30, we have an anointed Bible class. And you definitely don't want to miss that on Wednesday. So powerful, wonderful word Wednesday. Um, you don't want to miss that. And um, Thursday, kind of repeating with that um, prayer and word. And on Friday, we'll rewind, recap. We'll go back over this week's um, highlights of what God spoke to us on this week. And yes. we'll get on that millennial call, that Zoom call at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. We'll look to see you guys right there joining us at 8 p.m. And we don't want you to forget, this is January. We're already halfway through January, but we have an awesome um, conference that we're getting ready for. It's a virtual conference. It's our men's ministry Starting the conference. Year. Um, it's going to be uh, awesome. You don't want to miss it. They have a guest speaker in the person of Pastor Princeton Johnson of Oklahoma City. Um, coming from that outreach ministry there in Oklahoma City. We have a guest musician in the person of Otis Richmond Jr. You don't want to miss this um, mighty move of God, virtual move of God, hosted by the men's ministry um, of Acts. They have a pledge they want you to join with, a $75 pledge, so get your pledge ready. The date for this conference is January the 30th. January the 30th, okay? So mark your calendar for this coming January the 30th. Amen. Amen. And that is that is coming. That is coming right on up yes. on us. And that's moving. Today is the 19th. Yes. So inauguration day is tomorrow. We definitely want you praying about that. So the 30th is is, is coming. And yes. so we want you to that's get a ready. Saturday. And that's on a Saturday. So at get ready. 6 p.m. Central PM. Standard Time. Amen. Amen. So get ready. God Amen. bless you. We love you. Thank you for tuning in. Amen. Continue to pray for those that are sick. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. And, and bereaving, as bereaving well. and those that have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. Amen. And let's keep them before the Lord. And if you have any prayer requests, don't forget to send them to wtebroadcast at gmail.com. We love to pray and connect with you there. And you can connect with the ministry at axeministriesonline.org. We'd love for you to visit us there on our website. God bless you. God keep you. Have a wonderful, beautiful, terrific Tuesday in Jesus' name. Love <laughs> you to life. God bless you.